expert français. Est-ce qu'il y a un écho chez vous Un petit peu, oui. Non. Non, d'accord. Donc, euh, ah, je, il n'y a que chez moi. Euh... Philippe, il faut que tu fermes ton micro. Ah oui, d'accord. Ok, alors je vais. Euh... Et, ah, ah, oui, et, sorry, Nabil Alto. So. Uh, then I choose it on, pur on purpose uh, this topic because it's a uh, kind uh, uh, on, it's on the crossing road of uh, let's say three themes. One is a pure analysis. Uh, one focuses. Uh, one could be embedded into the uh, numerical analysis, and the 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 the, the topic will. Of course, will will of course have a, a mostly a probabilistic flavor. So, let me uh, show you a little bit what we uh, what functions and alternating functions, Et and we will see. Sorry, tu peux mettre yes? l'écran s'il te plaît? Full screen. Uh, okay, okay. Euh, c'est contrôle, euh, contrôle L, c'est ça Ok. Yes, contrôle L. Then we we start with. C'est bon. Uh, we we'll start with the con concept of completely monotone functions. So we will swap, and we will introduce uh, several new results. We will uh, swap to the concept of mini transform, which is. Uh, very, very close to the concept of Laplace transform. Uh, and Laplace transform, so we'll see that, uh, uh, that they, of course, they correspond to completely monotone functions. And uh, as an application, we will provide uh, uh, an answer about a nice limit theorem that could uh, have the same vocation than the classical uh, central limit theorem. Then I will uh, start with some moti motivation and put uh, the setting. Uh, the, co uh, the concept of completely uh, monotone function is very present in the context of semi-groups of uh, transition kernels. In general, in functional analysis, when we talk about transi uh, transition operators, these are family of operators act acting on uh, some uh, functions uh, defined from some space S, and you have uh, here behind the family of uh, uh, transition measures. So, what is, a uh, what is the semigroup, uh, classical semigroup property? Uh, the composition uh, of uh, the operators is uh, reads on the sum here. So, very famous thing, uh, 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 and for probabilists, it's very known uh, that they, they uh, the concept of the of Markov processes and uh, and uh, and transition behind are very often present, and the classical example of uh, Markov process uh, is the famous Brown and motion where the transition are given by the Gaussian this uh, Gaussian semigroup, and uh, for people doing uh, partial differential equation, this Gaussian semigroup is present, of course, in the heat. Uh, equation uh, related to the Lap Laplacian operator. So what is a Brown motion? Uh, what I draw here is uh, the trajectory T maps to BT. It's something fluctuating like, uh, like the fluctuation of uh, price option, uh, uh, for example. It has the, the properties uh, that at each fixed time T, the distribution will be uh, like this, will be a normal distribution. And uh, what happens uh, if you take two intervals, uh, blue one and uh, red one, what, let's say by the probabilistic uh, point of view, what happens inside this interval uh, uh, in, the, in the randomness uh, point of view will happen also in the uh, red interval. And what happens here is independent from what, what happens here. Okay, these are not very precise definition, but uh, I have to put the things into their context. So uh, behind uh, uh, each uh, uh, fair process, uh, of course, uh, there, there is a transition semigroup. 
and there is also the concept of infinitesimal gen generator, like the one uh, you uh, use it in functional uh, analysis. You take the, the, this kind of limit and you recover an operator. So what we have seen here is the famous Brown emotion, and uh, it's a prototype of what we call a Levy process. What is a Levy process? It's a process uh, indexed, uh, it's a family of uh, random variables indexed by time t positive, such that uh, if you take uh, an interval here and here with same size, what happens here uh, by the random point of view is the same and there is independence. Uh, what happens here is not affected by what happened here. So uh, these are Levy processes. Levy processes are processes with stationary and independent increments. The Brownian motion is uh, one of the most famous examples. Uh, the, the Levy processes are Markov processes, and uh, uh, the, the, the Markov processes could be embedded also into what we call diffusions. What what char what does char uh, what is the characteristic of uh, uh, le le Levy processes. Th because of the property of uh, stationary and independent increments, uh, th th we could uh, uh, entirely define them via what we call the levy kenshin formula. What you see here is the Fourier of the transition. The, the, the Fourier transform has necessarily this shape. It's, it will be the exponential of t times so, some function. And this function is called the, the Levy Laplace exponent of the Levy process xt. Observe that uh, it has a very, very particular form. You have uh, what we call here a, a drift a term, uh, what we call a Brownian coefficient here. And you see here a, a measure, an integral with a special kernel. And the integral uh, is driven uh, by uh, this kernel and uh, by this uh, measure called the Levy measure. Uh, what is the transcription in, in terms of uh, operator? This kind of operator uh, is uh, really, uh, it's very present in the, the, for uh, people doing uh, partial differential equations. You see here are the, the, the gradient, the, the Laplacian, and uh, uh, something here uh, with jumps. And there is a total correspondence. The, 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 this is ge the generator obtained by the transition semi group. This is the Levy exponent obtained by the, 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 uh, the Fourier transform of the measures behind the transition semigroup. And the, the, the generator has almost the same shape. Uh, first derivative, second derivative in uh, RD uh, replaced the, uh, this by Laplacian and gradient and increments. And uh, for example, if you, if you take uh, the Dirac measure, you will uh, recover uh, uh, direct measure uh, with mass A, you recover here an increment. And uh, the, this kind of uh, equations are very familiar, as I said, in the context of partial differential equations. So uh, people doing uh, probability and Levy processes and theory of fluctuation, theory of fluctuation. What is the theory of fluctuation? It's, uh, uh, it's uh, related to the to the this kind of process, uh, you have processes fluctuating uh, upwards, downwards. Sometimes uh, they are continuous. Sometimes there are there are jams. So what uh, what what you see in this uh, in this uh, figure uh, uh, is a, a trajectory of a Levy process. Uh, it could be, for example, the price of uh, oil suddenly uh, there is an information and, uh, and uh, the, 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 the price jumps down. Uh, we are also interested uh, by the first times the, the process crosses a certain levels. For example, at time one, time one is the first time I, I, I reached uh, the, uh, the blue level. This time, this kind of times are also very important if what you say here is the trajectory of the Levy process, the process you built when you cross the 
the levels, the blue, red, and green one, uh, actually corresponds to the inverse time of the process. The, this inverse time process is also a process, and it is called the subordinator. Psi t is the inverse of xt. Uh, XT. And uh, what is wonderful, uh, what I wrote here uh, is special. Uh, observed that here I, I, I took the Fourier version, but here I, I take the Laplace version. Uh, if the process has only jumps, uh, jumps only uh, downward, we have only negative jumps, then it's more convenient to, 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 to work with the Laplace transform. And uh, what you see here uh, is the measure that governs, that leads the jumps. Uh, the, 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 the beta term here is kind of drift. It gives uh, the tendency. Uh, the, the sigma here uh, controls uh, the fluctuation around the tendency. Uh, okay, forget this alpha term, it's a long story. So uh, what is wonderful is that xt, if xt is this process, the inverse time of xi t will be also process that, that, uh, that will be also a Levy process, but with only positive jumps. And the Laplace transform will be under this form. Observe here, you, you will get a plus. Here, you will get a minus. Uh, and the, the, the small five function has a shape very similar to this one. Uh, just forget this term and put the minus. And, uh, the, uh, and uh, forget, of course, the, uh, the gamma uh, term, uh, which, is, uh, the, 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 which is related to the Fourier transform of the uh, uh, Gaussian distribution. So uh, what you have to keep in mind is that uh, the subordinator are in very interesting, extremely interesting, because they give the, uh, they, they des describe the first times a Levy process crosses levels fixed in advance. So from now on, we will focus on this kind of functions. And they are call, uh, called Bernstein functions. OK, now we enter into some very uh, analysis stuff. Uh, I need to introduce uh, these uh, difference operators, this one, and the kind of reversed one, delta and theta at C. And we are uh, interested into the eighty rates of uh, these operators. So uh, for, uh, for a function f, the eighty rate has this form for delta and this one for, uh, for uh, theta. Now we will focus on the con concept of completely monotone functions and completely monotone sequences. Then the, the, the set D could be or R plus or the set of the integer. So from now on, we denote a function or a sequence uh, in CM. And we say that it's completely monotone if when you apply uh, n times these operators and multiply by minus, uh, minus 1 to the power n, this quantity remains positive. Then uh, let me stress that f could be a sequence or a sequence. We say that uh, the f is completely alternating if the sign is negative. So completely monotone, completely alternating. A uh, 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 nice characterization due to Bernstein in the early uh, uh, 20th century is that the function f is completely monotone if and only if it is differentiable. It's not very easy to, to start from this and to prove that if f is a, comp uh, is a function and this holds for any c positive, then necessarily f is infinitely differ differentiable. And, uh, and uh, furthermore, if a function, uh, if f is completely monotone, then the derivatives uh, alternate in sign. And this is equivalent to say that 
f is simply the Laplace transform of a measure. So this, this, this stuff is very classical and very nice and very neat. I introduce, I already introduced the class of Belsham functions. What are Belsham functions? They are simply uh, the, the uh, uh, positive antiderivatives of completely monotone functions. So you start from this, make an antiderivative, then they correspond to the uh, the, the positive completely alternating functions. Of course, if f is completely monotone, minus f would be com uh, completely alternating. And uh, a very important fact is that uh, the class of function f such that f power t is completely monotone for any t corresponds to the class of function f of the form exponential minus phi, where phi is a Bernstein function. What is this, uh, the, the point here? Of course, if you start with the Laplace transform or, or with the Fourier transform, take f and j, two Laplace. The, the, the product f by j will be the Laplace transform of the convolution of uh, the measures behind. The convolution is uh, the, the classical co additive convolution. So uh, uh, f power n, f power p for an integer p remains a Laplace transform. But uh, it, uh, in general, it has no chance to remain Laplace transform if you elevate to the power one half. So the class uh, of functions that are completely monotone and uh, such that elevated to any power t uh, remain completely monotone are characterized by this form, where phi is a Bernstein function like this. This is a reminder to the story. I already said that xt and xi t are both Levy process. This one jumps only to, uh, downwards. This one is a purely jump, uh, jumping process and it jumps only upwards. So uh, xt has the property of uh, stationary and independent increments. And what reads behind uh, what is written here is that this measure is somehow Decon uh, uh, deconvolvable as much as you want. That means uh, the, the power of this, the 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 the, the, the root, uh, the, the the root in the sense of the convolution of this will be uh, if t is one over n, take t is one, uh, equal to one over n. Then look at this as as the uh, the the root, the uh, one over n root. Of, the of this distribution. This is very related to this. So, uh, I already said that Bernstein characterized the, uh, the, 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 the class of completely monotone functions. And uh, after, uh, 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 after this class wa uh, was named after his name, the class of comple uh, completely monotone sequence and alternating sequence were characterized, characterized by Hausdorff. Uh, completely alternating function, uh, sequences corresponds to million transforms of measures supported by zero one. This is a very nice fact. And this, this shape is the counterpart of this one. Uh, completely alternating sequences have also shape, which is the counterpart of this one. So until now, things go very smoothly. Uh, I need a small technicity. I, I will call a sequence uh, AK minimal whenever it's completely monotone and it ceases to be completely monotone if you just modify a little bit the first time. Remove or add any uh, epsilon then uh, if you just modify the first time, uh, you, uh, the, this pro uh, property will fail. Uh, for alternative functions, functions, it's uh, the same, but uh, on, the, on the right. Uh, in 46 and uh, 2002 with different methods, uh, it was proven uh, by Wither and uh, Atavari Rangibar that the sequence in minimal if and only if the measures you see here give no mass to zero. So minimal sequences are, uh, are 
uh, here I, I, I made a small mistake. It might be a one and here it might be zero. So what is our problem? Uh, if you, you start from a sequence AK, AK, make a simple change of variable, put U equals exponential minus V. So you are modifying the measure. You are making a change of variable, U equals exponential minus V. Then exponential minus V, we, uh, uh, will be in zero one and V will be positive. Then you recover a, a, a shape like this exactly. It's a simple change of variable and the same happens here. Then it's very obvious, uh, obvious that uh, if you start from, uh, uh, from a completely monotone sequence or alternating sequence, then you can, uh, it, it will be included, let's say, embedded into a completely monotone function, respectively alter, uh, completely alternating function. So, uh, uh, Wither, uh, Bershine, and Hausdorff, finally, uh, give an answer. Any sequence AK is within uh, a, a, uh, AK, could be written as F of K, uh, where f is a completely monotone function. Any completely monotone function a k could be written as an f of k, where f is a completely monotone function. Uh, the same for uh, uh, alternating and Bernstein. So the natural question is, uh, if you, you start from a sequence f of k, and you know that f of k is completely monotone as a sequence. Is it true that f as a function is itself completely monotone? And you ask yourself the same question in the context, uh, context of completely alternating and Bernstein functions. It's uh, quite the same problem. So let me repeat uh, the question uh, differently. Uh, if you start with the sequence a k, is it possible to interpolate it by two different functions, f1 and f2? Uh, or uh, is it possible to interpolate a k by a function f, which is not completely monotone? Then uh, this is a kind of uh, converse to the Hausdorff moment uh, characterization problem. So uh, tentatives were done in this uh, direction. Uh, I will propose start with uh, the result of May, Chank, and Cherer, 2015. Uh, a function psi is completely monotone if and only if it is it's continuous, and f, a psi of x by k is a completely monotone a monotone sequence for any x rational. Okay, then you have to check this for all x. And that equation is, what happens if I work with the single x, take x equal one? So this is the answer. The answer causes a lot of, of analysis. Um, the, uh, this, uh, this answer was provided by myself and Rafiq Agash here present. The, this work was uh, done uh, three years ago. And uh, a function psi, is completely monotone if and only if these two hold together. Psi of k is a completely monotone sequence. And uh, here, th 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 this version uh, uh, deals with bounded functions. Huh? Sorry, something is missing here. Uh, 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 so a bounded function psi is completely monotone if and only if psi of k as a sequence is completely monotone and psi have uh, a, a nonomorphic uh, bounded extension on the uh, right uh, complex plane. Then we don't need to check for all x, uh, but what replaces the, this condition is uh, this condition of uh, holomorphy. So uh, after uh, 
uh, if a function of psi completely monotone, sorry, if f here is not bounded, f of lambda plus c would be a bounded function. Uh, this is a trick. Just make a small delay. Uh, f of lambda plus, uh, plus c, c uh, positive constant will be a bounded function. So this is why we started with uh, a bounded version for completely monotone functions. And, uh, and after, uh, of course, we make, uh, we, we swap to non-bounded and we, uh, we can have uh, 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 an equivalent ver version for non-bounded. So as a corollary from now on, uh, if two, uh, two functions that coincide on the set of the integer, integer uh, from a certain rank, uh, then nece necessarily they are equal. So two function f and j does not need to coincide on a whole interval, but uh, on, a, on, a, on a set like this. Uh, probably this kind of problem is uh, often uh, very frequent in the for in uh, numerical analysis and the problem of interpolations. Uh, the, the, in, the, in that area, it's uh, very common to interpolate uh, uh, a function by uh, by points by polynomials. Uh, so what we'll see here uh, after two minutes will be close enough, you, you, and we'll be convinced. Uh, I, hopefully. So uh, a function, uh, we have uh, the, the, the Bernstein function uh, version. Uh, Bernstein fu uh, function uh, phi is a Bernstein function if and only if this, uh, the, 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 this sequence is completely an, uh, alternating. And we have also a an, uh, non-homorphic extension on the half uh, um, uh, right plane with the bounded decrements. And of course, uh, to, in order to say that two Bernstein functions coincide, you only know, uh, need to know them on the set of uh, uh, integer. What are the tools? We had to develop a lot of tools. Uh, if you know, if you start from Psi, and you know that this increment is a complete monotone function for a fixed C, then necessarily psi, uh, uh, this is going to say that psi itself is completely monotone. And uh, we have applied once this uh, difference operator applied at time uh, at n times c, and this guy will converge uh, locally uniformly to the original function uh, psi. And you have a version also for Bernstein functions. Things are quite similar, of course. We, we needed also more technicity. Uh, the, this is a kind of uh, what, what we say, Karamata theorem. Karamata is very known for in, uh, in, uh, in uh, analysis for this kind of limit theorems on functions. You start. Uh, with measurable functions, if uh, this kind of limit L hold, then necessarily uh, L is linear is a linear function, and uh, uh, if you start from limit along the integer, then then you could also recover it along R plus. If if this holds by passing the limit on n, then you, you will have the, uh, the same thing. Uh, usually, it's the converse. Uh, but what is funny here uh, is uh, if you know that the limit holds along the integer, then it will hold along the positive real number, and uh, uniformly also on compact sets. Uh, and uh, the, we also use it. This is developed. Uh, this uh, this was uh, developed by me and uh, Fariq. It's an adaptation of uh, of uh, some similar technical lemmas. 
This one is classical. This is due to Blaschke. Uh, two holomorphic func functions uh, are identical if and of, uh, only if they uh, they are if they are sorry if their difference is bounded, and they question the longer sequence that that is uh, that satisfies its uh, divergence condition. And we also appeal it to uh, Webster results about. Uh, iterative functions, um, iterative uh, equations. Uh, this kind of iterative uh, equations are familiar, of course. If you take J, uh, the identity function, you re will recover the gamma function. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, if, you, if uh, you, you are given J and uh, an initial condition, uh, what, what, are, uh, what are the conditions that ensure that you have a solution. Uh, if J is log concave, then you will get a log convex uh, solution to this and given explicitly by this form. We also use a very old tool due to Norland. Uh, and uh, uh, the re re result is stated in uh, his book. It's a very old book. Uh, uh, which is not really known even by people uh, from uh, numerical analysis. So we say that the function f admits a Gregory Newton development. Instead of having a power here, uh, you, you, you have a kind of a descending factorial. Then uh, uh, this function, uh, function f, has a Gregory Newton development if and only if it's holomorphic on uh, some region of uh, the right space and uh, have a bound, uh, exponential bounds. And what is funny is that necessarily the coefficients here are re recovered by the uh, differential uh, operator delta at, time, uh, at one. Then the, these were the, our main tools for proving uh, the converse uh, of okay, it's uh, perhaps it's too much. Uh, too much. Uh, uh, how would I say? Uh, it's too much to say that we we solve the big uh, something uh, big. No, no. Uh, the, the, the converse. Usually, I guess that people know that there is a kind of converse, and nobody uh, really proved it neatly. Uh, so, from now on, we will uh, we will swap from Laplace transforms to Millin transforms. Uh, don't, please don't be afraid by this notation. Uh, it's the integral of x power lambda against uh, the distribution of x. It's uh, it's uh, it's something like this. Look, uh, the expectation of a function of x is the integral of the same function against the distribution of, of uh, the guy. So the Millin transform of a random variable x is very important because it's related to, uh, to the, uh, the so-called house of moment uh, problem. That means that there are distributions that, uh, that are entirely de uh, uh, determined by the, their integer uh, moment when lambda is an integer. And you, you, you have all the seconds uh, with lambda and integer. Then you can sometimes recover the distribution and sometimes not. And uh, we are talking uh, about a problem of determinacy. Uh, so, we start with some properties of the Millin transform. It's a log convex function. And whenever the random variable here is not uh, deterministic, then it will be strictly log convex. And these ratios are non-decreasing in T uh, and strictly increasing where, uh, when X is not deter uh, deterministic. Uh, the Millin transform has also, uh, 
is the mini transform injective, like the Laplace transform or the Fourier transform? Of course, yes. But how could, how would you uh, state the injection? Uh, uh, notice that the mini transform is not always uh, well defined. So we talk about uh, the, the lower bound or, uh, the, for the range of lambda for which it, uh, the mini transform is defined, and also the upper bound. Uh, so this function is uh, defined uh, uh, between uh, new x and lambda x uh, open. So, uh, of course, uh, the mini transform uh, modulo uh, simple change of variable, huh? it's a kind of Laplace transform. So uh, we get for free the injection, but uh, and it, it is we it is it's stated like this in the in the Widers book. Uh, if two million transform uh, coincide on their common domain of definition, then the the, the, the distribution behind them are equal. Uh, actually, we 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 improved a little bit the Widers result, and it's enough to. Uh, for the two the two million transform to coincide on a very small interval in order to get equality in law for the two distributions uh, using argument like the, the preceding you can uh, even go uh, go further and, and it's enough that they coincide along a sequence uh, uh, with, with uh, nice properties etc okay i don't get into the details I would like to get into a purely pro probabilistic uh, problem. My problem is, uh, uh, in order to introduce my problem, I need, uh, and I would like to apologize, some uh, probabilistic notations. So from now on, x denotes a random variable, and x uh, indexed like this denotes a version of the biased law of order t. That means you start with the original one, you put uh, a weight, which is a power, look at this as a measure, and you modify it like this. And uh, if you assume that uh, we have a million transform of, of order uh, t, then this guy will be finite, you, and you normalize, and you get a new distribution. So elementary properties, uh, the million transform of uh, two independent random variable is the product, uh, uh, the independent product of uh, the two biased uh, Random variables, uh, buys once, buys twice. If you uh, if you buys once, then twice, uh, you, you get uh, the 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 the, the biasing like this. It's a kind of oh, I wouldn't say it's a semi group. And uh, how to do you compute the expectations? Just uh, compute them like this. Uh, the biasing of the power acts uh, like this. It's very easy to, uh, to check. So. Why do I need this? And why do also do I need this? Because I'm going to make a limit theorem. I need to, uh, to, uh, to make things converge. Then I need to talk about uh, the concept of uh, convergence of sequences of random variables. Uh, then from now on, the set T will be the set of integer or R plus. Uh, and uh, sep uh, we say that uh, the classical definition uh, of billing, say, of tightness and uniform integrability, if uh, 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 are conditions, uh, the, the, uh, somehow sufficient conditions ensuring the, the conversions in, uh, uh, in law uh, of the seconds uh, Xn. Um, uh, instead of working with Billingsley, we take uh, more freedom and uh, to the original def uh, uh, definition, uh, because this is more restrictive than this one, and this one is enough for us in order to solve the problem I'm going to introduce now. So uh, this is for specialists. If you are not a specialist, you can forget. Uh, we, we, we have here, oh, something wrong went here. The brackets mm -hmm. are not uh, good. Okay. 
here we have a, a, a version uh, which is similar to uh, to the one we uh, we uh, we have for the the the, the, con the famous diagram of convergence. Uh, what are the relations between the convergence of uh, in distribution in probability in uh, in uh, in low in all uh, in the almost sure mode? This is uh, this reminds so uh, certainly the convergence in L1, but it's not really in L1. So uh, we have the uh, we have we had to uh, the, 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 this is a, actually a second part of the talk, and uh, this part was. Uh, Done jointly with the uh, Fethi Bezofur in, uh, in um, this uh, university and uh, my, my, my student, uh, Nofil Harthi. So uh, we focused on a problem of convergence. So I, start, uh, I started before the problem with the tools. I have uh, reversed, uh, reversed the, the, uh, the approach. So uh, if uh, the xt converges in distribution in x infinity and at this condition of lambda integrability, this one, lambda uniform integrability, then this is equivalent to say that the xt converges in distribution uh, to x infinity and also you'll get the convergence of the moments. And these two are equivalent also to the, 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 this, the, this third more readable uh, condition. You will get also the convergence of the million transform. So the, 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 uh, usually when we handle the convergence and distribution, uh, we characterize it via the convergence of the characteristic functions. Here, things are much more intricate. Uh, because uh, at least uh, you lose the boundedness. The characteristic function is a bounded uh, function, but not these ones. Then a lot of care has to be done uh, when handling uh, the uh, the million transforms. So uh, if the million transform converge to some function, then Necessarily, uh, this function is uh, the limit of uh, is the million transform of uh, some limiting uh, uh, random variable. A second, uh, as a corollary, we can get easily this uh, lemma. If W is the independent product of uh, two families, you know that uh, one of them converges in distribution. Uh, both of them converge. In distribution, uh, and you know that W, the original one, is a lambda. It's uniformly integrable. Then you know that W and V converge in distribution. You know nothing about you. If W is uniformly integrable, then you will also converge in distribution. Uh, of course, in uh, in uh, almost sure mode, this is trivial, but you, you are working in the in the distributional mode. You have no tools to apply uh, classical tools. Apart separating this, and how do you separate them? You separate them via a million transform. This is why we needed to to introduce the, this preamble for the second. I need also additional preamble, uh, a function. Uh, here I come back to the concept uh, somehow to the completely monotone function. Uh, actually, before being a completely monotone function, a function is T monotone for any T. That means that, uh, that, that you, ha you have, uh, you have uh, this, uh, uh, this condition, but that fixed order N, not for LN. So uh, if you have it at fixed order n, you, you will say that f is n monotone. And you can even generalize this concept to 
T monotone functions, you, you will see here a kind of fractional derivative or what, uh, whatever you call it. Uh, T could be a positive real number. So these kind of functions are called the T monotone functions. For probabilists, they immediately recognize a mixture uh, by beta distributions. Uh, probabilists are familiar with uh, the gamma beta bridge and the relation uh, between how to build a beta with other betas. You have to, there, is, there are bridges also. Uh, this kind of bridge by the, by the probabilistic uh, point of view will lead us to this nice characterization. Uh, a, a density function of a random, uh, positive random variable z is t mon monotone if and only if this z is the independent product of a beta distributed random variable by size by, uh, size by the distribution. So Z is a bit with some X, by Z, by Z in, sorry, by Z in this sense. This is the by Z, huh? And now we focus on the famous problem of Harkness and Chantaram, 1969. How do they state it? They start with the distribution X and they apply what they call the stationary excess operator. That means they are modifying the distribution, the original one and building a new one by this operation. And uh, they take, they consider the iterates of this operator. And they were interested about is it possible to find a normalizing uh, speed such that this En of X obtained by iterate, uh, iterating this procedure will converge in distribution to, uh, some, to something? This was their question. So they solved it and they uh, proved that under sufficient, some sufficient condition, I will I'll come back on this sufficient condition, it's possible to make this converge. But they had the problem of determinacy. What, what kind of uh, limit shall we obtain here? So what you see here uh, looks like the classical, for example, here you are making an, uh, an operator. Uh, you, are, uh, you are applying an operator on the distribution. Uh, in the classical central limit theorem, the, the, the operator the, is uh, the, the, just take the, uh, the, 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 the random walk behind x, the random walk behind x minus some drift divided by square root of n will converge to the standard normal distribution. This is uh, the uh, uh, ABCD the, the, that we teach uh, to the lower levels of uh, probability. Here, the modif modification is much more intricate. So uh, starting from any X, we uh, having a uh, second moment, you build a random sum, you normalize, uh, you, you remove the drift to normalize, you get the in zero one modulo that you uh, divided by square root of N. So what should be the speed? This is a natural equation in order to make this converge. And if this converge, what is it? Uh, so several uh, papers dealt with the, uh, the identification of the possible limits for here. And uh, many of them described them via functional equations, etc. There is a lot of literature uh, around here. So, we start by noticing that the continuous version of En is, could, could, could be also descri de, 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 described like this way. If you replace by N, you get S. Uh, so why not taking T a positive random uh, real number? So we, we have just seen that this guy will have a T monotone uh, density, if X has a density. Uh, you, you, don't, 
you don't need uh, actually to, to have a density for X because beta is a continuous random variable. I had just uh, rectified. Uh, so the problem becomes uh, what happens if uh, we take T, uh, let T go to infinity, and T is a, a positive real number, not, not an integer. And uh, would we have some uh, two, two different kinds of limits? So first of all, it's very easy to get rid of this uh, beta t. t times beta t will go to um, uh, what is beta? It's a, it's a, it's a beta with parameter 1 and t. So this guy will, uh, will converge to the exponential distribution. So it's enough to focus on x by the t and to find the adequate uh, uh, sequence, normalizing sequence. So the problem of uh, heightened center uh, was for reformulated by us in this mean. This simplifies a little bit. The necessary, the limits will, will be uh, a mixture of exponential distribution. This is the first step. So the second step is to use the heavy machinery. We, uh, we just uh, produce it and we have the uh, series of uh, equivalence, equivalences. So we, uh, the convergence uh, in distribution and the convergence in uh, the, 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 the and the finitude of the mini transform ensure the convergence of the mini transform, and this is uh, the, the, this necessarily give this condition of uh, of let's say slow variation, and we were also able to identify the limits. Let me stress that since the beginning. In the, in the literature dealing with the, the problem of Harkness and Chantram, one of the candidates, Z infinity, was a mixture of exponential distribution with the log normal distribution. So what we prove here if, is that the only limit that could arise is a mixture of exponential with log normal distribution. Then. This z infinity, which is often described by this uh, equation in law, actually, if this is true for any s, then necessarily uh, the distribution of z is a mixture of an exponential distribution with a log normal distribution. Then from now on, we don't have to ask uh, what happens here. What happens here is very clear. You can recover only a single uh, limit, which is the mixture of E by log normal distribution. The parameter C here, you see uh, the, 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 that uh, uh, the, that you get, uh, you fix it since uh, since the beginning. Fix it, take it, fix it there since the beginning, and uh, you, you you will get uh, the, a single limit. It's a kind of C is a kind of uh, initial condition. Huh? So you need, we need to provide uh, examples of, uh, uh, of course, this doesn't uh, happen for all. Uh, we started with, we started, sorry, we started with a single distribution. We iterated the procedure with the, uh, uh, the, the, the operators of Hackness Shantaram. The, the speed necessarily is of this form. This is a normalizing speed. And you have to multiply it by T. Uh, you don't need uh, nothing. Uh, you need nothing here, but you need to take n rho n here before the simplification. Uh, so 
if rho t satisfies this condition, uh, this one and this one actually will be uh, equivalent. The limit should necessarily uh, correspond to the limit. So if your speed rho t satisfies the slow varying condition with, uh, with uh, some c, c could be, uh, uh, if c equals zero, look at this as a, as a constant. Huh? Uh, this is the variance. If c equals zero, then you will get a constant. Otherwise, c will be strictly positive, and the only possible limit is, is, is this one. And this entirely solves the problem of uh, uh, hardness, of identification of hardness and chantelum. So not all distributions satisfy this. I will give you now examples of distribution satisfying this. I'll come back to the concept of uh, monotone uh, uh, func uh, of order uh, k, uh, uh, or functions of uh, monotone of order k. So uh, this is supposed to be a positive, huh? sorry, reverse uh, the sign. Uh, then if, uh, if, uh, uh, this function will be uh, uh, convex. So you can write things smoothly here. And the ratio will be described by the increments uh, of this function. So the simple condition is to have j monotone of order three, then you will, uh, this will guarantee the existence of the limit of this ratio. So whenever you get this, the, your limit theorem uh, stemming from this will work. And we get a limit and not, uh, not an unknown limit, as I said. So uh, it's enough to work on the uh, log million transform of the initial distribution, if it's monotone of order three. Okay, are there plenty of them? Yes. If you start with the Levy Laplace exponent of uh, some infinity divisible random variable, uh, actually, uh, I, I denoted log uh, an x, I take an x such that log of x is infinity divisible and have this exponent. So it's trivial to check. It's very easy to check that, that this, this guy, uh, sorry, this guy has, uh, is such that the limit ship is bounded by one. Because you, uh, you don't need one. Uh, act, yes, yes, here. The things are okay. Okay, uh, maybe I took too much time now, maybe. And these it's are okay. some of the references. It's okay. You finish? Yes. Okay, thank you, Issa. Uh, there is, if there is some questions. I, I don't have any question. I'm sorry, uh, we Sam. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, thank you, we Sam. Thank you, Sam. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, I understand well, mainly the first part of your talk. Uh -huh. uh, so, if I understand well, uh, you, you speak about uh, Bernstein function and completely monotone function, mm -hmm. and we give some characterization of them, uh -huh. uh, and we link this to Levy measure, a Levy process. Is it right? Uh, uh, your only... motivation, your motivation no, the... was uh, Levy yes. and Levy. Okay. 
Yeah, so, yes. um, uh, my question is, um, is it possible to get characterization using your results on the Levy measure that we call uh, a new RP? Because those measures have a very, very nice meaning. They, um, they describe the jumps of the yes. Levy process. Right. So if we can, if we can translate your characterization on the Bernstein or completely monotone function to this, uh, to this uh, Levy measure new, I think um, yes. This is my question. Is this possible? Right. To do yeah, this? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, are you thinking about the uh, special direction? You, you you want to to estimate new? Or, uh, I, um, I to uh, what what's the information that we can oh, get? from uh, on a new using the, your characterization on Bernstein and uh, Bernstein function, for example. Yes, you know, by the, What's the information that we can get on a new, it links with the jumps of the process. Yeah, and why yeah. not an estimation? Yes. Uh, l l l l if you want to make estimations, on, uh, uh, there, are, there are a lot of techniques, of course, uh, for people doing uh, statistics of uh, stochastic uh, processes, uh, especially heavy processes. You have to know that most of the time, uh, even though you have uh, F uh, explicit, uh, for sure you have a phi explicit, you would never have uh, this phi uh, explicitly most of the time. Uh, for example, take lambda divided take uh, uh, phi equals lambda divided by log of one plus lambda. Mm -hmm. This will be a Bernstein function. Mm -hmm. And good luck if you succeed to recover pi with, with elementary functions. So uh, we are probably outside the problem of, of estimation here. Uh, not necessarily estimation. Um, information. Information on a new uh, on, on information the, on the jumps on the jump. Ah, ah okay, okay. Uh, if you know uh, phi along the integer, what happens? You know, this, uh, the, we, we know what. If we only know phi along the integer, I don't know really. To be honest, I don't know what we could know about the process or even on uh, the jumps. Or, no, I don't have a clue. Sorry. So, do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hello, hello. Hello. Uh, yes, oui, oui. Oui. Oh, un problème avec le son. No, 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 on t'entend bien, Cyril. You can proceed. Sorry, okay. English. Uh, so, yes, I have two, two little questions. So, uh, when you mentioned the web stairs, uh, Now we, we don't hear. Sorry. We are not hearing you. Ah? Ok. Ah, euh, non, là, là, on t'entend. Là, on t'entend. Ok. Alors, <rire> un problème. Ah, il y avait un problème à, 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 à connaître Yannou en demi à the same time. Enfin, oui, c'est vrai. Ok. Donc, um, uh, when you mention the, uh, the Webster theorem, you have the factorization for yes. F, yes. and yes. it seems quite quite reminiscent of what is uh, what you can get by the Weierstrass factorization theorem. Just right. below, 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 just below the next line. Yes, this one. Yes, this model. So is it indeed exactly the same as if you do Weierstrass uh, factorization here, or is it a little bit different? I think it's a little bit different. It's special to this kind of iterative equation. But it's familiar. For sure, it's familiar. OK. Le, and then I have another more global question. Um, so with respect to the other moment problems and so on, well, you have a, a lot of variance depending on the support of the distribution. If you are on uh, the, the full uh, real axis, or on the positive axis, or on some limited interval, and then you, you get some, some characterizations of what uh, could be the the moment determination in terms of determinants or uh, uh, this type of stuff. So did you try to check if you have some similar results with different supports? 
Uh, did, did I just check? Sorry. If you can get similar results, but for different supports. Different supports. Supports yes. of, uh, of uh, the measure. Of the measure. Uh, okay, I just missed the beginning. We are here or uh, in the previous? Yes. Uh, so for, for the classical moment you complain, you have different characterization, which is splitting mostly into three different cases. You have some conditions, technical conditions, uh, if you are on the full real line, or on the real positive axis, or in the limited interval of the real numbers. Yes. Yes. this is too much ambitious <laughs> we 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 just clarified that to be honest we just clarified uh, the, 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 the 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 other side um, we are not aware uh, uh, about uh, other uh, other works in this direction maybe the question uh, uh, when you solved it we, we had to, to work a lot but uh, Uh, yeah, uh, so you, you, you would like to have some extension uh, for the uh, hamburger problem with uh, different supports, right? Yes, and I would be probably probably it will be an adaptation. Uh, I, I guess it will be an adaptation. My kind of intuition without any work on it, it will be my intuition because it's it was always like this in the past when people were able to do it for one of the days. I, I, I don't hear you very well. Sorry, uh, sorry. Why? <laughs> ah, now we are okay. Okay, but 